Hi everybody, I'm James from Zygo Studios, and today we're going to be talking about this. Well, okay, not all of this, but really just this. This is a Field Programmable Gate Array, or FPGA, as it's called, and this is the Arctic 7 variant. Now, you may be wondering, what is an FPGA? And today we're going to answer that question. It's important to note that these are pretty popular in the embedded field, and they really changed the way people looked at embedded logic versus cost and performance. Because you really only had a few options. You could use a microprocessor, a microcontroller, or you can design uh, your own silicon yourself and create what's called an application-specific integrated controller, or also known as an ASIC. And this way you could fit a lot of logic into a small block that you can place on your PCBA. Let's get into it. As I mentioned before, you have a couple of options when you want to build some type of circuit in a small package that packs a punch. You can either do it yourself with RLC components and transistors and design it on a circuit board, but the trouble with that is that sometimes you waste space and it's difficult to meet all your design requirements cheaply before you start having to look elsewhere. The next step up from that is probably going to be the best option for performance, and that's going to be what's known as an ASIC, an application-specific integrated circuit. Now while these can perform the best out of anything because you're designing a circuit specifically to do something, it can be challenging because the expertise required in order to develop something like that is much more rare, it's much more expensive to maintain, especially at low volumes, and it's hard to upgrade, especially after you've done it. You're basically locked into the design for the lifetime of the ASIC, and changing it is expensive. Now you could go a step above this and get a microcontroller or microprocessing system. If you design it this way, the system is infinitely more configurable and much cheaper. However, you're going to suffer on the performance side of things, even with today's modern microcontrollers that can get up to close to half a gigahertz of clock speed, you're still going to have a lot more overhead when you're trying to compute these certain things. So you're going to have to have a lot of supporting circuitry to help with that, which can end up being just as expensive, if not more expensive. While it's field programmable, and you can upgrade the firmware on the fly, and you're not locked into a design, and it's more cost effective, sometimes it just doesn't meet your performance needs. One of the major advantages of an FPGA is actually in its name, field programmable. You can reprogram if you make a mistake or if you realize that it needs more provisions or features in the field. It can simply be reprogrammed and still perform to the specifications that you want. Versus an ASIC where you have to go remanufacture, redesign, test, and make sure that it does exactly what you want. All while keeping the same amount or similar performance to what an application specific integrated circuit can do. FPGAs are made up of what are known as CLBs or configurable logic blocks. In one CLB, there exists flip-flop circuitry, a lookup table, along with multiplexers. These are all connected through an interconnect, and then through programming in HDL, such as Verilog or VHDL, a user can create circuitry that's reconfigurable through this interconnect of matrix of configurable logic blocks. Once the user's finished, they're able to download the code to the board, and the hardware is designed. The major advantage here is that you can actually run things in parallel versus in a microcontroller where things are done sequentially and are limited by the instruction set and all the overhead of running instructions, this is not the case. There's minimal overhead for setup and for routing it through the interconnect, but you have the benefit of actual real hardware and running things in parallel. Now you may be wondering, what's the downside? Because it seems like this is the perfect sweet spot. Why isn't everything programmed on FPGAs? If you get a lot of power packing into a small die package, you have a lot of configurability with it, but you still have the benefits of what you'd get out of an ASIC, what's wrong with it? Some of the cons are, it's higher cost than say like a microcontroller for example, and it's high power. So while you do get the benefits of performance and reconfigurability, there's a higher power requirement because the complex hardware that sits inside making it reconfigurable is typically more hungry than an ASIC while at the same time costing more than a microcontroller. So these are things you have to look out for. But overall, it's a good choice if you need the high performance in a small package for a reasonable price and you want it reconfigurable for the future. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you could and you want to see more content, please leave a like and comment and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments of anything you want me to do in the future. This is James from Zygal Studios, signing off.